good morning everyone and uh, today our topic of discussion is bone tumors and uh, it's a very complex topic I will say because of the confusion and classification uh, but uh, I try to do this as simple as I can and uh, so that you know uh, you should have a better understanding what is bone tumor uh, let me tell you the importance of this topic bone tumors as a whole um, or you can say all the bone tumors which we are going to um, study uh, during this lecture and not all of them they are important um, rather I will tell you the two important tumors which we are going to discuss at the end of the lecture like either this lecture or either the next part of this lecture if there is any other part because I'm not sure I can cover this topic all topic in one lecture or not so now uh, of course like bone tumors is like uh, we are going to discuss or take an overview about all the bone tumors which can affect the bones um, now uh, bone tumors can be primary and can be metastatic or secondary um, of course like uh, uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss the primary ones uh, which originate from the bone uh, and metastatic or secondary bone tumors basically are all the bone tumors uh, which uh, result as uh, uh, due to different cancers in the body uh, like uh, breast cancer in females or prostate cancers in males or any other XYZ cancers because um, uh, all the cancers they can metastatize <laughs> they can they can have they can spread or they can uh, seed or they can meta uh, they can leave the metastatic lesions to the bones so uh, of course our main discussion will be primary uh, there are some tumor like lesions of the bones as well um, and sometimes you know musculoskeletal tumor is used then soft tissue tumor of extremities is included so um, anyhow our discussion will be uh, primary and we will also discuss some uh, tumor like lesions of the bone uh, now uh, in many of the surgical books maybe you will found uh, because I don't know like which uh, surgical books you are following because many of the surgical books they uh, mention uh, under uh, orthopedic oncology this topic right uh, so based on that but like of course like they all say say the same thing uh, so now uh, of course like uh, primary or secondary and remember primary again secondary is of course they are coming from the other things and primary again can be subdivided into um, benign and malignant right uh, so uh, one more thing like of course uh, Uh, the management of bone tumors is uh, a very difficult thing uh, there are different reasons behind that for example uh, like one of the thing which um, it is they are difficult to treat is like because um, you know the bones are the one which give us skeletal rigidity right or stability uh, so of course like in case of uh, bone tumors whenever we resect or whenever we take out resect that tumor uh, of course we have to fix that lesion because uh, we have to uh, give that skeletal rigidity back to that person of course otherwise you know uh, for example someone have a vertebral 
tumor, someone have a femur tumor or any other XYZ tumor. So of course, like uh, it's important to uh, give skeletal rigidity uh, to the pa to the to the patient. Uh, this is one of the thing. So. Uh, uh, depending on either the lesions are benign or the malignant, of course, the, the management is different because benign, you know, uh, whenever we resect the benign tumors, you know, the bones can regenerate whenever we uh, resect the uh, malignant ones. Uh, we cannot rely on the bone so that it will heal. Uh, so in that case, you know, reconstruction is more important. So now... You can see the epidemiology. So in epidemiology, uh, uh, low incidence, of course, like bone tumors are not so common. Okay, this is one of a very important point to remember. Um, of course, like if you will see, uh, especially the cancers in the body, you know, bone tumors doesn't hold a good place like... Uh, being the most common carcinoma, carcinoma in females is breast cancer and the most common carcinoma in males is prostate cancer and then there is colon and lung cancers. So, uh, bone tumors. Incident is not so high. Okay. So, uh, one very easy point to remember in this one is remember that the uh, bone tumors uh, the primary bone tumors I'm talking, talking about is very common in children uh, and adolescents whereas the metastatic of course the carcinomas are more common in older age so of course like they are more common in adults so uh, this thing is quite understandable right uh, so now Uh, if uh, if I will talk about the classification, as I told you, we are going to uh, cover primary tumors, right? Uh, now, from now, uh, like uh, this lecture will be about the primary tumors, okay? Because metastatic tumors, we are not discussing them. Um, of course, because uh, they, they can come as a result of different cancers. So when we talk about the benign, uh, when, whenever we talk about the classification and we are classifying the primary tumors, so they could be benign, intermediate, and malignant. Uh, sorry, there is no pointer over here, so I think I must uh, put a pointer over here. Okay. Anyhow, let's see. Okay, sorry. So anyhow, like, you know, there, there is benign, enchondroma, osteoid, osteoma, intermediate, giant cell tumor of bone, and malignant, right? And then there are some tumor-like lesions. You can see, like, the bone cyst, aneurysmal bone cyst, eosinophilic granuloma, fibrous dysplasia of the bone. So they look like tumor on images, x-ray, CD scanner, MRI, but exactly there is no... tumor cell in histological sections, right? So, of course, like when we diagnose any bone tumor, so whenever we take the imaging, on imaging, they look like a mass, but uh, when we do the histology, uh, we found that, you know, uh, they don't carry. See, what is carcinoma or what is a tumor? Uh, of course, like the primary tumors which originate uh, in the bone from the bone derived cells and tissues and what are the secondary uh, tumors they originate from other sites and spread to the bones right uh, as i told you the example of carcinoma of prostate or breast or lungs whatever they can spread to the tumors uh, bones okay uh, now uh, you can see over here See, bad results, what I was talking about compared to most organ cancers. Five-year survival is used to evaluate the effect of children. It is cruel to the whole. Like, this one is, uh, again, like, you know, how bad they are. Okay. Uh, 
now uh, for secondary tumors uh, like for both other organ cancers you know pathological diagnosis is the gold standard but for the bone tumor we need to make diagnosis based on combination of pathological conclusion imaging conclusion and clinical characteristics there is no gold standard uh, for this one okay one thing which i want to mention here you know uh, whenever we are dealing with any tumor in the body what we do we take a biopsy and when we do the biopsy we know okay um, uh, like what's this tumor is made up of right so uh, for bone of course we can do a fine needle biopsy we can do a core biopsy or we can do a surgical biopsy as well uh, so uh, of course like uh, on biopsy we can make the diagnosis uh, we can take help from the imaging and of course bone biopsy is not as easy or uh, of course it's an interventional process and in which like uh, they pass a trocar and they take the sample from the bone so uh, not like other organs in which like the biopsy can be done very 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 easily okay so now uh, the thing is uh, uh, that uh, we are going to uh, discuss like all the tumors which we have discussed uh, which we have seen in the classification uh, i will talk a little about enchondroma osteoid osteoma and all this one right one by one so uh, of course like these are the benign tumors uh, there are many benign tumors you know uh, other than these but like uh, uh, of course like uh, I put the important one over here, include the important one over here. Uh, the most important ones, you know, are osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. These are the important topics, okay. Uh, these are not so important. So once the diagnosis is done, then we go for the treatment. And uh, uh, of course, for benign and intermediate bone tumors, we go for surgery for a malignant bone tumor. We need more treatment like chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or of course surgery uh, but uh, again like before start talk uh, before uh, what you can say uh, going in more detail of this tumors uh, let me mention you one thing you know uh, of course like primary tumors or prime like benign tumors uh, they are localized they are at one place uh, we can remove that and the problem can be solved easily but for this whenever we are dealing with any carcinomas uh, malignancies like uh, Ewing sarcoma or osteosarcoma there is chondrosarcoma there is fibrosarcomas there are many sarcomas so in that one of course you know uh, whenever we are going to deal with any malignancy in the body uh, in management point of view you know we do staging okay and uh, staging is like to check uh, how much certain tumor is spread in the body uh, like uh, either it's just localized here or either it's like what is the size and there are many things which are which are used for that so of course we go for staging as well so and now you can see surgery more depends on histology and staging so uh, enacting staging system is a scientific evaluation system so uh, what is this enacting uh, what you can say uh, staging system again it's a name of a guy who uh, what you can say uh, define this thing okay and uh, he's the one uh, like we like the, for the bone tumors they use necking staging so uh, now the surgical mode will be decided on based on the staging and everything either it's a intralesional surgery either it's a marginal surgery either it's a wide marginal surgery or either it's a compartmental surgery uh, you can see in acting staging so uh, in this one uh, basically uh, what they use like they use roman numbers um, you know roman number one refer to the low grade skeletal sarcoma uh, roman numerical two is high grade and roman numerical three means uh, metastasis uh, is there uh, you can see over here G for grade, T is for territory, M is for metastasis, uh, G O means benign, G1 is low malignancy, G2 is highly malignant, 
and TO is intracapsular, T1 is extracapsular, uh, and so on, like intracompartmental. Okay, like this T2 is extracapsular and extracompartmental. And M0 is when there is no metastasis, M1 M1 when there is metastasis. So, uh, uh, like uh, they they uh, what they do is like they use this letter A and B. Uh, the letter A refers to intracompartmental tumor localization, whereas the letter B refers to extracompartmental growth. Okay, like this is the way which in Eking they uh, classify the tumors. Okay, or based on the staging. So. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what you can say, uh, this is the staging we use, and I'm talking about these things in the start because after that we will be discussing different bone tumors. So, uh, of course, like the management of the uh, bone tumors completely depends on either it's malignant, either it is benign. Uh, of course, whenever it is uh, uh, malignant, then we have to do resection followed by chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and all these things, right? Uh, so. Uh, you can see over here what uh, is written over here, you know, surgical mode. So, like all this thing is decided on different, like what kind of tumor is there, right? So, there are basically four types of surgical resections. Uh, so, and everyone is, you can say, defined by the margin. You can see, see marginal, intralesional, wide marginal, and compartmental, right? So, uh, intralesional resection or intralesional surgery. Uh, uh, means like you know you are just uh, taking out the lesion okay uh, so uh, just you have to remove the tumor whereas marginal res uh, surgery or marginal resection is basically uh, you are taking out the tumor uh, plus uh, the periphery of the tumor okay uh, whereas uh, <coughs> Uh, what you can say wide marginal surgery uh, this is the third kind uh, what you can say uh, in this one uh, so see intralesional just take out the tumor marginal you can say just a little of margin wide marginal like you are taking more margins okay so what they do like uh, uh, when they dissect through uh, the normal tissue like in with tumor they are taking out the, the normal tissue as well so usually uh, uh maybe like they take around one millimeter or one centimeter of the normal tissue right uh, that is like done in highly malignant cases in which like uh, there is a uh, chances that you know even if a small size of tumor will be left behind maybe it can uh, what you can say again grow from there and destroy the other area so that's why you know white marginal surgery is done for that uh, so, what is uh, compartmental surgery, okay, uh, in which like, you know, the entire compartment in which the tumor is there is resected. So, it is called as compartmental surgery, okay. Uh, it, it is also called as radical uh, resection, okay. This is also called as radical resection. So, it could be intralesional, marginal wide marginal or compartmental or you can say uh, radical resection can be done so of course like with radical resection uh, we for example if the tumor is uh, uh, at the end of some long bone so what they do like they take out the, all the long bone okay or any bone is there they just take it out all uh, what you can say all that area Okay, and rest is like, uh, the, again, like in surgery, you can just get the overview and of course, like it depends again on the time of surgery. At the time of surgery, the surgeon decide if he can see anything, any abnormality in front of his eyes, then of course, they, they just remove that. Uh, you can see over here, uh, here are the things which are used for uh, biopsy. This is trocar and this one is used to put it inside the bone. And uh, once you know they reach the bone, they can take a piece of the bone uh, for biopsy. So uh, now, uh, of course, like uh, uh, they give some sort of uh, anesthetic uh, at the site of the puncture, and then they you can see the uh, videos on YouTube. 
um, so that like you know you would understand like how they do and after uh, of course like after uh, treatment you know uh, this one is like the open biopsy uh, of course like when you cannot use the trocar um, like what you can say uh, you can do open surgery in which what you can say you can open and take the biopsy uh, so, of course, like once the resection is done for any bone tumor, what they do is like they have to do reconstruction. Uh, and what I mean to say is skeletal reconstruction. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, like our bones or our skeleton is a very, very, it's an organ like bones and all the system, skeletal system is considered as an organ or a system. Uh, you know, 20% of the cardiac output goes to our bones and all our skeleton and it have a very good um, you can say power to heal itself uh, so now uh, depending on like either you are dealing with children or either you are dealing with adults uh, basically uh, in childhood or in children their bones regenerate at a higher rate than adults so like any small bone defects of approximately like five centimeter or smaller uh, most of the time you know they uh, they take a what you can say iliac crust iliac crust like uh, you can feel your iliac crust they uh, take a bone from there and they just like uh, do you can say a graft uh, to the area of the bone which is removed okay so uh, most of the time this thing is done okay uh, so uh, or they like there is something called as like blood bank there is something called as bone bank as well they can they can take from there as well so uh, nowadays you know we have some medications like uh, growth factors one thing is called as bmp2 that is bone morphogenetic protein 2 bmp7 is there they are also used like uh, to increase the bone growth okay uh, so uh, this thing can be done but for example whenever there is a larger defect which is there after bone resection so of course like they have to use some complex reconstruction procedures and in that case of course like uh, uh, they use some metal or they use some allograft uh, to reconstruct that area okay so things goes like this way so uh, again like the, I'm just giving you an overview and I'm just giving you the ways of course which are available to deal with these things uh, rest like you don't have to remember like what is the name of the drugs what are the things you know which they use rather just an overview is enough for you guys right so let's start discussing the first benign tumor that is osteoma so osteoma as the name shows osteoma it means like you know oma means tumor and osteo means bone tumor so uh, very easy way to define osteoma is what uh, osteoma is like uh, you can say uh, when there is uh, uh, a bone formation right a bone a new piece of bone is formed uh, so of course like they grow slowly they are usually asymptomatic they usually needs no treatment uh, and surgery is only done when the patient uh, complain or when the patient have discomfort right so uh, you can see over here this arrow okay like this is a osteoma uh, where there is a formation of a new bone right uh, so uh, osteoma uh, uh, okay now uh, the the photographs which I put in this slide are basically specific uh, in this way that with the photograph you can remember you know uh, at which area this thing is common so see this is a photograph of skull so uh, it's a benign tumor the most common place is skull okay uh, so uh, like this is how this thing present okay so now then 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 there are many technicalities i don't know like uh, if you know that's better if you don't know like doesn't make any difference because uh, these kind of questions you will never encounter in any exams right like uh, these are not the questions for plab for usmle uh, like even in usmle books they, they never mention this thing 
like when the bone when this osteoma is grows on another bone uh, it is called as homoplastic osteoma but whenever this new bone formation is on some other tissue it is called as heteroplastic osteoma so uh, now uh, basically this is the most common benign uh, tumors of the nose and paranasal sinuses okay and if you will see over here this osteomia is also near to the paranasal sinus so uh, this thing uh, you uh, now like you can understand like this thing okay rest guys treatment is generally not needed surgery is only required when the patient feels discomfort the second one is um, osteoid um, osteoma right so now osteoid osteoma you can see over here uh, like see this one persistent pain can be relieved by aspirin uh, aspirin of course like uh, I mean to say some minor analgesics right uh, typical x-ray is a circular lesion you can see over here or over here and uh, with diameter less than one centimeter surrounded by a reactive bone of a reactive bone or bone proliferation if you will pay a little attention over here you can see over here and you can see like you know uh, surrounding this the, like there is a, a darker uh, region okay which is a new bone formation or a new bone formation so uh, now uh, these basically arise from osteoblast okay and some time from the osteoclast as well so now uh, they are very small in size less than one centimeter uh, okay if you will see over here uh, where is the location okay like this one is femur this one is also femur so uh, this tumor uh, basically most commonly uh, occurs in the long bones though they can occur in any bone but mostly on long bones okay so and they can occur at any age uh, but they are more common in males than females okay these tumors are more common in males than females so now uh, usually they don't cause much symptoms but sometimes they cause pain uh, and due to pain you know the person when they walk they limp uh, and they have swelling sometimes okay so simply to for the pain relief we can give them medications okay and sets are very good for this thing so this thing uh, like this is how they can be managed uh, and most of the time this pain comes during the night okay so uh, by the way all the pains you know they are more pronounced during the night because you know when you are at rest when you want to sleep so then you know your body uh, all the pains basically they they become highlighted so uh, that's the reason guys you know uh, I, I I talk about the uh, what you can say uh, the uh, the staging and the treatment options or the biopsy or all these things you know in the start right because with every tumor I'm not going to talk about the same thing so you can see over here of course we were we, we can do a x-ray and they are very they have a very typical presentation on x-ray uh, okay doesn't mean we can do just x-ray of course we can go for ct scan we can go for mri okay even we can go for a radionucleotide scanning but mostly uh, you can say uh, x-ray are the most commonly thing used in the hospitals so uh, this is how this present so uh, now surgery is only needed uh, uh, like what you can say uh, when the patient is, like the pain is so much disturbing that it is not going away by anti-inflammatory drugs and then you can you can uh, go for a surgery by the way nowadays you know other than surgery there are some newer ways like uh, CT guided radio frequency ablation is an alternative to surgery surgery is of course intervention like uh, doing a whole surgery and remove that so 
by radio frequency we can do the ablation of this thing right uh, so nowadays of course like this is also an option uh, by, by which we can treat this kind of tumors um, then there is osteochondroma uh, okay uh, okay osteochondroma are important to mention over here uh, see uh, you can see over here single and slim the prognosis is good multiple wide based uh, the prognosis gets worse and there is certain rate of malignant transformation okay so uh, you can see over here just few points are written uh, basically uh, uh, this osteochondroma and uh, combine them with enchondroma which is our next tumor you know they are the most common benign tumors okay uh, like if you combine both of them osteochondroma with and chondroma okay uh, what you can see in these photographs you can see over here like the bone should come like this but see it's going like this way or you can see over here it is too much uh, widened or you can see this one see there is a lot of new bone formation or this one and this is a person uh, you can see like his joints are not normal see his jo like his bones are not normal uh, there is a, a clear-cut overgrowth in his bones uh, so basically, uh, these tumors they take a form of cartilage cap bone projections or overgrowths, okay, uh, uh, of the bone. Uh, so now uh, <clears throat> uh, this tumor can occur in any bone where where there is cartilage, okay. So you you can see like you know there is a cartilage in our knee joint, so that's why you know they can they are present here here okay so uh, this thing uh, now uh, they are very 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 uh, like they, they are the you can say the common ones okay and uh, what happens uh, they are slowly growing okay they are slowly growing and they are symptomless and most of the time they are found incidentally so uh, uh, what happens that uh, most of the patients they don't have any symptoms okay but sometimes whenever they have symptoms of course like the symptom is a mass like they found that they have a swelling which is painless okay which is immobile or uh, sometime they due to this over like growth of bones they have pressure symptoms on the adjoining structures like muscles nerves vessels like this and that's why you know they have pain and so the simply it, it could be asymptomatic it could be uh, simply uh, the patient see that you know that they have bony overgrowth and all the stuff or bony deformity so they go to the doctors okay uh, so this is how they present so simply you know when the tumor grows too much so they can cause pressure symptoms and due to pressure of course like if they are putting a pressure on the vessel some vessel it can lead to for example thrombosis okay uh, things like this so now uh, the important thing is uh, if you will see over here this thing how it looks like you know it looks like a cauliflower okay so it looks like a cauliflower uh, now you know how they diagnose of course they can do a x-ray which you can see they can do a CT scan they can do a MRI they can do a ultrasonography and depending on, depending on like if you want to check that joining structures of course you can go for angiography but uh, this is how they are diagnosed and now uh, how to treat uh, guys uh, they are benign they don't spread in the body so that's why uh, the only uh, way is removal if they are growing too long uh, like surgically, surgically they can be resected but remember if it is not resected completely it can again grow back okay it can again grow back to the uh, to, to a tumor so that's why whenever there is a resection it should be complete okay so now one of the thing I want to mention about osteochondroma in very minor amount of patient you can say percentage of patients 
they can become malignant okay they can become malignant so this is how uh, though what you can say the chances of osteochondroma to become malignant is very very less but again they can become malignant okay in very few uh, patients so again like uh, sometimes the surgeries are done because of pressure uh, problems like uh, the pressure they are causing to the adjoining structures okay so sometimes the uh, surgeries can be done due to that okay if you will see over here this is our fourth benign tumor and probably the last benign tumor which we are going to study uh, this is called as enchondroma so now if you will see over here uh, see uh, the photographs uh, or the x-rays which i included in this one are basically uh, if you will see these are the um, digits right the x-ray of the hand okay so this is bone within a cartilage cell mass common in the phalanges single good prognosis multiple bad prognosis now enchondroma is a benign cartilage tumor found inside the bone see this one this one or this one this one right okay now uh, uh, you can see over here basically uh, enchondromas whenever they are there they don't cause any symptom okay so uh, that's why many times they are incidental findings okay but if the tumor is grown very large for example this one maybe there is a uh, pain or symptoms due to the pressure effects okay or maybe the patient will come to the doctor because you know uh, his digits or his hands are becoming or some finger is becoming too large uh, it is very slow growing okay and sometimes it is associated with uh, what you can say uh, some other conditions like one is called as all years disease but uh, not always okay so diagnosis is mostly done on x-ray okay uh, so what on x-ray they can found that uh, uh, there is a bone formation from the cartilage okay and uh, you can see over here or over here uh, can be easily diagnosed uh, rest of course you can go for a ct scan you can go for a mri you can go for a radionucleotide scan okay now how to treat it again treatment completely depends on the patient if there are symptoms you can treat or if for example uh, it is causing too much discomfort and surgery is done okay uh, of course like when you are going to remove this tumor maybe this bone will become weak then you will go for a bone grafting uh, this thing can be done okay so this is about enchondroma uh, next to enchondroma <clears throat> um, there is chondro uh, chondro uh, blastoma okay uh, so see like they are basically um, quite similar okay chondroblastoma okay now <clears throat> uh, let me tell you uh, one thing why it is written over here that it is a uh, intermediate tumor okay benign tumors either they never become cancerous or neoplasm or malignant uh, rather uh, what you can say uh, like if they have malignant transformation like the chances are very 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 less uh, whereas uh, if you will whereas the intermediate bone tumors they have higher chances you know that they can become malignant right so that's why they are called as intermediate bone tumors okay if you will see over here now uh, Okay, wait. Okay. Actively growing with strong locally aggressive, even metastatic. Recurrence of resection in some cases not sensitive to radiotherapy and may lead to malignant transformation. Okay. Now, this one is a rare type of tumor. 
okay but it is aggressive locally aggressive okay because if it is uh, not just locally aggressive rather it can spread to other parts of the body of course it will become a malignant tumor okay this one basically affect the epiphysis of long bones okay now because it is believed that they arise from the cartilage forming cells or immature cartilage cells that's why they are called as chondroblastoma because it is believed that they are they arise from chondroblast okay so it is very uncommon okay but it mostly affect children and young adults and uh, uh, what you can say uh, again it is two times more common in males than females okay and the most commonly affected site this one is humerus but remember the most common affected site is fever followed by humerus and then tibia okay now how the patient present the patient present with uh, uh, pain okay and uh, now uh, uh, the pain may be the presenting feature or maybe uh, there could be what you can say a pathological fracture but less commonly okay but pain is basically the most common and the first symptom with swelling of course okay they can be present plus like what remember about the pressure symptoms right uh, of course like when the bone is growing too much big uh, so that it is causing pressure on the uh, side structure so of course like it can lead to uh, symptoms related to that okay uh, so now uh, the important thing about chondroblastoma uh, which is written over here uh, okay again how to diagnose we will go for a uh, uh, x-ray ct scan mri whatever you are doing and of course you will go for a bone biopsy and of course like based on the result of that uh, maybe like okay you can make the diagnosis of uh, uh, chondroblastoma uh, like of course when they will do a, a biopsy uh, they will found chondroblast or you will found uh, what you can say uh, like what they found is osteoclast type giant cells in this one okay so and many other things of course like that is all histology related but this is how they make the diagnosis so how to treat that uh, you know like uh, they don't go by themselves they don't heal themselves so of course they go for surgical um, removal of this tumor uh, followed by bone grafting of course which i told you which is the only way to give skeletal rigidity okay in the patient after removing the bone tumors so uh, of course like surgery can be done okay okay so now uh, after surgical resection uh, sometimes you know they use a, a wide marginal resection as well so that you know this tumor should not uh, come back as well uh, okay in this one because you know it is not sensitive to radiotherapy and chemotherapy so they, they are not mostly used uh, in this case uh, but sometimes you know they use radio frequency ablation to to remove this tumor so this is about control blastoma okay other than that the next uh, intermediate tumor which we are going to cover is osteo uh, blastoma okay uh, now again as the name shows osteoblastoma right uh, okay see it is locally invasive recurrence after resection and malignant transformation tendency is there okay again number one it's not so common okay okay uh, now the thing about this tumor which i wanted to tell you is that if you will see here it's look like a osteoid osteoma which is the first tumor which we cover right but basically histologically they are different from this one okay uh, from that one so what happens like the patient who have osteoblastoma basically they present with pain and what they present is like with um, a chronic type of pain or a long term you know they are feeling this pain usually at night now 
one of the thing is basically this pain is not relieved by uh, the drugs like aspirin i use the word aspirin over there okay so now uh, this is how the patient present okay uh, the important thing to tell you about this thing about this tumor because this tumor have more uh, malignant transformation tendency so what they do uh, of course like this should be removed okay and how they remove it uh, again uh, uh, this is one of the tumor in which like they first try medical treatment okay uh, and uh, in medical treatment like what they do uh, like or you can say the non-surgical treatment okay uh, they, can, they can use that thing but if it is not treated by that way then uh, of course like uh, they go for surgical reaction and resection in these patients okay okay the last uh, intermediate tumor which we are going to cover today is basically called as giant cell tumor okay uh, so uh, if you will see over here uh, these are osteolytic tumor okay originated in the cancellous bone potentially malignant lung metastasis common easy to relapse after surgical cure attach okay uh, so <clears throat> a giant cell tumor um, is basically uh, it you can say they make around 20 percent of all the benign tumors uh, it is a very uh, aggressive type of benign tumor you can say okay and the one of the thing is like uh, uh, you can say like this is one of a benign cancer okay uh, like one of the book it says like you know you can you can you can take it as a benign cancer okay uh, okay uh, now here the point here is there is lung metastasis or pulmonary metastasis is there basically this pulmonary metastasis is also benign but the important point to remember here is what there is pulmonary metastasis uh, not in many patients but in just you can say uh, two percent of the patients it can metastasize to the lungs okay so now about giant cell tumor uh, basically what happens uh, uh, what happens is uh, uh, the prognosis is not so bad because uh, uh, if uh, the treatment is provided you know 80 percent of the people they uh, they have good survival rate okay though uh, after resection see easy to relapse after surgery so uh, like when they go for surgery and they remove that tumor uh, the relapse rate or you can say the recurrence rate is around 40 percent okay like 40 percent of people they have what you can say uh, uh, they, they it can reoccur okay so uh, basically what they do by the way uh, they do a very aggressive surgical treatment uh, for example they use high speed turbine uh, burring of that one uh, they use polymethyl uh, bone cement they'll use liquid nitrogen phenol or uh, argon beam laser things like this okay uh, to remove that tumor so uh, now uh, basically anyone who have this tumor uh, what happens is like uh, they present with pain and you can see like the pain the the, the tumor is so big here and here you can see over here so basically they have pain and limited range of motion a swelling is seen okay uh, sometimes they present with pathological fractures as well so the diagnosis of course is made on biopsy so what they do like they take a biopsy and what they found in biopsy is multinucleated giant cells and that's why it is also called, called as giant cell tumor okay so this is how they present so of course whenever we go for diagnosis we also take our x-ray mri ct ct chest is done as well and the treatment uh, is uh, again the same thing i told you curettage removal of the uh, bone tumor plus sometimes like aggressive therapy is used so that you know this tumor should be completely removed so this is about all the benign and the intermediate bone tumors um, in next week in the next lecture uh, what we'll be discussing is the 
malignant tumors okay uh, and that will conclude like this uh, lectures on the bone tumor so thank you so much guys for listening i will see you next week